The film opens with a disoriented man, awakening in a mysterious room. The cube-shaped space is adorned with glowing lines and features six doors. As he regains his senses, he opens two doors, revealing identical rooms with varied colors. His curiosity peaked, he opens a third door and meets a gruesome fate, a device slices his body into large cubes, effortlessly disassembling and disappearing. The scene shifts to a confident Quentin, entering a room where he finds an unconscious worth. As they attempt to rouse him, a door opens, and Holloway cautiously enters. Quentin and Holloway soon realize they are trapped, and they hear Levin's terrified screams from an adjacent room. Quentin brings her into their space, accidentally shattering her glasses. The tense atmosphere escalates with the arrival of an elderly man, Wren, from an upper door. The Quentin is perplexed, lacking any recollection of their past or purpose. Quentin, arrowly avoiding a deadly trap, recognizes the danger lurking within the rooms. Together, they embark on a perilous quest to find an exit. Wren takes the lead, demonstrating a method for detecting traps by tossing a boot into rooms while maintaining a grip on the laces. This allows him to determine if any hidden triggers are present. When he throws the shoe into a room, it immediately bursts into flames, indicating the presence of motion detectors. Wren quickly retrieves the shoe and warns the others that entering the room would trigger the detectors, resulting in severe burns. By using this method, they can identify which areas are safe and which are hazardous. As they proceed, Holloway ponders the possible creators of the cube, considering the possibility of aliens or government involvement. Soon, strange noises can be heard from outside, resembling the sound of a large elevator. While Holloway remains optimistic about a potential rescue, Quentin and Wren speculate about the existence of an escape route and suggest moving forward in a straight line. Overwhelmed, Levin begins to panic, fearing they will never escape the cube. Quentin reassures her, however, that they will definitely find a way out. Wren then suggests that they must keep moving forward in a straight line to reach the end. The others agree, and they begin navigating through the rooms in this manner. Wren continues to throw his shoe into adjacent rooms to test for traps, leading the group inside one by one. As they move forward, they notice a series of numbers displayed on the hatchways between each room. Holloway infers that there are thousands of rooms, and since they have no access to food or water, they can only survive for three days. Wren proposes sucking on a button from his shirt to stimulate saliva production and stave off thirst. Everyone follows his lead, and as the hours go by, they continue with the boot trick and proceed forward. At one point, Wren throws another boot into a room, but he finds nothing alarming. However, he observes that the air is dry and assumes that the room probably has an electrochemical sensor that detects hydrogen sulfide emitted from the skin. Quentin becomes curious about Wren's expertise, prompting the old man to reveal that he's a French escape artist who has successfully escaped from more than seven major prisons. Shortly afterward, Wren jumps into a room that was tested with a boot, only to be sprayed in the face with acid. The others quickly pull him back, but it's too late. The acid corrodes Wren's face and head, leading to an agonizing death. The group concludes that the room must have had an electrochemical sensor that their friend missed, so they need to find a more effective way to test the rooms for traps. While moving forward, Quentin asks everyone what they do for a living. He starts by revealing that he's a police officer. Holloway claims to be a doctor, while Worth simply states that he works in an office without providing further details. Levin, on the other hand, reveals that she spends most of her time socializing with her friends. Quentin is convinced that there is a reason why they are all in the cube and that it's not just a coincidence. He also wonders why Levin has her glasses while Holloway has lost all of her jewelry. As they continue to discuss, Levin suddenly reveals her talent for math. The others encourage her to use her skills to decipher the cube's code, assuming it's a puzzle. In the next scene, Levin notices that certain rooms with prime number labels are dangerous. She proves her theory by explaining that the room where Wren was attacked with acid was labeled 149, which is a prime number. Using the same method, she checks the numbers in the next room and finds none are prime, making it safe. Impressed by her cleverness, the rest of the group praises her. Levin then confidently enters the room without harm and confirms its safety. They continue using prime numbers to guide them for several hours. During this time, Quentin casually flirts with Levin and reveals that he has three children and is divorced. Eventually, they come across rooms with prime numbers on every door, indicating traps lay ahead. Quentin then investigates the door in the ceiling. A person named Kazan plummets from above, repeatedly uttering words and insisting on going to the blue room. Holloway infers that he has a mental disability. Levin wonders how he has survived thus far. When the group decides to proceed with their plan, some members view Kazan as a burden and hesitate to include him. However, due to Holloway's persistence, they incorporate him into the group. 
As they ponder their surroundings, Holloway and Quentin discuss the potential mastermind behind the cube. Holloway assumes it might be a government project, possibly built in a desert. Quentin, on the other hand, speculates that a wealthy individual may have constructed it for entertainment, but Holloway finds this theory amusing and dismisses it. Shortly after, Quentin enters a room without prime numbers and narrowly escapes a fatal trap involving rotating razor wires. This incident disproves Levin's theory about safe non-prime numbered rooms. Later, Quentin becomes suspicious of Worth, suspecting him of being a spy due to his silence since they met. The group takes a break while Levin attempts to decode the numbers. Later, Quentin tricks Worth into confessing that he is one of the architects who designed the massive cube-shaped structure containing the cube-shaped rooms. When questioned about his employer, Worth admits to never having known them, he was just in it for the money. Despite increasing tension within the group, Worth shares vital information about the exterior cube size, which is 434 feet, and Levin deduces that there are 26 rooms on each side, totaling 17,576 rooms. She proposes that the numbers between the rooms might represent Cartesian coordinates, indicating the room's positions within the cube. With this new knowledge, the group decides to head towards the nearest edge. They continue to boot the rooms to detect any dangers. In the next scene, they come across a seemingly safe room adjacent to theirs. However, as they are about to cross it, Kazan suddenly screams, triggering deadly traps. The group realizes that the room is equipped with a sound-activated trap system that poses a risk if they pass through. Quentin suggests leaving Kazan behind, but Holloway insists they bring him along and even volunteers to go through the room with Kazan. After everyone navigates through safely, Quentin's turn comes, but Kazan accidentally triggers the trap, causing Quentin to narrowly escape death. Enraged, Quentin attacks Kazan, but Holloway intervenes. Quentin's anger then shifts towards Holloway, leading to a heated argument. Holloway accuses Quentin of preferring younger girls, suggesting that might be why his wife left him. Quentin becomes so angry that he slaps Holloway multiple times. The two individuals are separated from the rest of the group and, after a brief period of calm, they continue forward. Eventually, the group reaches one of the sides of the cube, only to find a gap between the door and the outer wall. They use their clothing to create a rope and Holloway bravely volunteers to swing out and explore the outer space. However, when she lingers outside with the help of the makeshift rope, all she can see below is complete darkness. She then attempts to swing towards the outer cell, but the rope proves to be too short for her to reach it. As she hangs outside the room, the cube suddenly shakes violently, almost causing her to fall into the void below. Fortunately, Quentin manages to pull her back inside by the rope. But the next second, he intentionally lets go of her hand, leading to her tragic demise. Following the incident, Quentin lies to the group that Holloway slipped and fell. This devastates everyone, but they have no choice but to move forward. After a bit of discussion, the group plans to descend to the bottom edge of the cube. However, before that, Levin suggests they take a rest for a while because they are all exhausted. The rest of the group agrees with her, and they all lie down on the floor. While they sleep, Quentin takes Levin to another room and attempts to persuade her to leave the others, also making unwanted sexual advances. When she refuses, he becomes aggressive. Thankfully, Worth and Kazan wake up and arrive at the room to rescue her. Quentin's trust issues with Holloway have caught up with him, and he's now admitting that he had suspicions. This has led the rest of the group to assume that he intentionally killed her, which has made Quentin rather angry. In his anger, Quentin attacks and tosses Worth into the next room, where Worth discovers Ren's dead body. This discovery sends Worth into hysterics, but he also notices that the acid room where Ren died is no longer nearby, leading the group to realize that the rooms are shifting. Levin also comes to the realization that rooms with traps are marked with prime power numbers, which are a larger set of prime numbers. With this new information, she starts calculating the position of the coordinate number 27, which exceeds the expected 26, indicating that there is a bridge room leading to the exit. She realizes that it will move twice before returning to its original position and proposes checking for prime factors to determine safety. However, she explains that calculating the prime factorization of three three-digit numbers for each room they enter is too complex without a computer. Luckily, Kazan reveals his true abilities as an autistic savant and quickly performs the calculations, impressing everyone when he reveals the prime factors of 567. The group continues to verify the safety of their surroundings, using Quentin's calculations to confirm that the coast is clear. To double-check, Quentin tosses a piece of debris across the room, which lands intact, signaling that it's safe to proceed. With Kazan's help, the group makes their way towards the exit without incident. Worth then devises a plan to subdue Quentin, who has grown increasingly paranoid. He successfully lures Quentin into a room below them and leaves him behind, sealing his fate. 
The rest of the group continues on and eventually reaches the bridge room of the cube. When they open the door, they are met with a flood of bright light pouring in. However, Worth decides to stay behind, convinced that there's nothing for him outside the cube. Just then, Quentin appears from behind, having caught up with them once again. In a tragic turn of events, he kills Levin with a broken door handle and injures Worth with a powerful stab. He then turns his attention to Kazan, who is trying to climb out of the room. But before Quentin can reach him, Worth grabs his leg and holds on tight. The rooms begin to realign in the narrow crawl space between them, causing Quentin to get stuck and meet a gruesome end. Worth also succumbs to his injuries shortly after, but not before saving Kazan's life. The final scene shows Kazan emerging from the cube and looking out at the blinding light, which may be the escape door. Please like and subscribe for more video like this. Thanks for watching.